and JT off the edge? Is it, uh, they're not getting a lot of pressure, but is it, is it scheme? Are they getting their job done? Just what are you seeing out of JT and, and Jack? Yeah, they're getting their job done. You know, we faced uh, two games where really there weren't that many opportunities to pass rush. Um, you know, there, that chance will come probably this week. But like I always say, you never know. Um, it looks like this week they're going to get their chance. You know, we faced an, an option attack. And, a, you know, last week a lot of teams trying to run the ball on third down, you know, um, shorten the game. So they just haven't had the opportunities yet. Uh, right behind him, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. As you've been formulating this, you know, your, your defensive philosophy over the years, these run or RPO heavy offenses. No, 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 how much do you have to adjust your philosophy to attack a team like this, or do you, do you feel like this philosophy is built already? To, to yeah, we built it over the years for the RPO. Um, I think sometimes you can get uh, lulled to sleep, you know, or uh, lose your eyes. A lot of it is about eye discipline, but um, you know the answers are there. They're they're in the system. Um, I feel good about what we have. It's just continued training. All right, we'll go next to Spencer Holbrook, Letter Monroe. Jim, what did you like so much about uh, Jordan in the slot on Saturday? Do you think that you guys are going to be able to use that to your advantage moving forward? Yeah, he's a athletic, competitive guy, you know, um, who showed uh, also from that position a willingness to tackle you know so those guys get into the mix some um, as tacklers and um yeah he showed a toughness also with having the foot speed of a corner which is ideally what you look for we'll go uh, second row right here Bill Landis. Jim, um i guess just maybe as part of your philosophy um how important are like havoc plays behind the line of scrimmage top of the loss some sacks and when you come out of a game where you know, you're playing an FCS opponent, you only get three tackles per loss against a team that runs the ball a lot. Is that, is that not meeting the standard, or do you not concern yourself with those kind of plays? I think I've adjusted. You know, um, I think when you're at places where you need to live in that world, you know, feast or famine type of world where you're trying to make sure that you take a lot of chances, do a lot of different things to somehow gain the advantage you know I think I've adjusted my philosophy here because we have different players and um, you know my job is to make sure that we win the game you know not get the TFLs and uh, a lot of times I think the best philosophy here is to let the guys play keep the points off the board that's an adjustment from Oklahoma State absolutely, to, to here. When, absolutely. when did that kind of click for you I guess you know, probably last year when we experienced some issues, yeah. You know, I mean, it was, um, I think if you live in that world against teams that, you know, where you have a skill advantage, it can look really nice. But when you get into the matchup games, you know, I found that it can hurt you. So you need to be able to adjust. Like in your past, just especially the last two years of Oklahoma State, you guys were among the best teams in the country and making those kind of plays. Were those more the, the byproduct of, I guess, hyper aggression, being, being willing to, to sell out a little more to make those plays? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, fourth row middle, Tony Herdeman, Buckeye Hill. Uh, Jim, it seemed like you guys lost leverage a little bit more this week than the previous week. Would you agree with that? What would you assess? That yeah, I do agree with that. Um, I, I think uh, it's uh, guys trying to do too much. You know, we have to make sure that uh, as coaches that they do their jobs and, tr and trust the defense. Um, you know, we have guys who want to make plays, and I think it, at times that leads you to, uh, you know, putting your eyes in the wrong place. I just wonder was that when they did it so well the week before against an offense they weren't expecting to see, and then you. You see an offense you're expecting to see. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, I think uh, the first week, you know, we definitely got into a, because it was such a, a different approach, the option that we hadn't practiced, I think, all, you know, all the guys came together and we made adjustments and it felt like the energy and 
and everybody was, you know, just trying to get their job done because you're trying to figure out the option. You know, there was a hyper focus on that. And then this week, um, you know, I think guys just trying to do too much. Go right here in the front, Austin Ward. Jim, did you find yourself blitzing on Saturday more than you expected to? Um, I mean, I always expect to blitz, just pick and choose the moments. Um, you know, probably, you know, when the first drive went south, you know, I pulled it out to try to create that aggression, try to get us back in front of the sticks. But in general, overall, probably not. A couple times on the first drive, more than I would have expected. Stay here in the front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, how does uh, Western Kentucky's air raid, if you will, uh, compare to some of the, the teams you'd face in the, in the Big 12 with their the emphasis you put on the passing game? And is there anything you can draw from, from those matchups? Absolutely. They're you know very similar to a Big 12 uh, type of offense. They'll throw the ball down the field to get it, get you running on the perimeter, trying to tire out your defensive linemen, um, get you moving sideways in order to then go up top, you know, create eye violations. So, yeah, it's similar. Are there, are there things from those, like, to, to stop it and like that, are there things that, you, that are really important for your defense? Yeah, you, got, you have to be able to keep the ball in front of you. You got to be able to... Um, you know, I call it smart swarm. You got to be able to chase with, with proper leverage. You can't just chase randomly on the screens. Everybody's got to be at the right place. Go third row middle, Dan Hope of the Warriors. Jim, what went into the decision to take Malik out of the game after that first series and go with Jihad the rest of the way? I mean, Malik just looked like he struggled a little bit um, on the first series, and that's natural for a true freshman. Um, he still will have the opportunity to play. Um, just thought it was best um, to get Jihad in there, a guy who had a little more experience. Where do things stand right now in terms of who your top free safety is going into this week? Well, you know, if, if Josh is healthy, you know, depending on what kind of practice time he gets, right, it really depends on practice and, and how well you practice. But I could see Josh um, moving back in there. Deep center field, Jeremy Birmingham. Maybe this is me playing too much video games when I was younger, but when you have a guy like Sonny Styles who is so different and can move and play basically on the edge or play nickel or play deep safety, in a week like this where you're playing against a team that you expect to throw the ball around a lot, is there any thought to having him in the middle and keeping Jordan on the field in the slot so you can get both of those guys length and athleticism out there? Or yeah, I think it's always a possibility. Sonny can do a lot of different things, and we want to build that in. At the same time, um, you know, Sonny's young, and uh, we want to make sure he gains the experience necessary to be, you know, a premier player at his position. So it's always that balance. How, how much more do you, you know, anything you do with him in other places, you know, which could be appropriate. Um, you do take away from his continued learning and progress at his position. Come back down here to the front, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Just how big a test will this be for you? Because you're going to, I mean, I'm sure your secondary is waiting for somebody to test them. Um, how big a test is this going to be for them? I think it's a big test. I really do. Um, you know, this is an offense that will attack on the perimeter and downfield. Um, you know, we had some issues with that last year. Um, we've gotten better in our first couple games in terms of explosive plays and minimizing that, but, uh, you know, we haven't really been tested yet, so this will be important. And this building off the question that Bill asked before, um, your change in philosophy because of where you're at, did that kick in at the end of last year, in the off season, or even the first two games this year? Um, yeah, I think it was, you know, building throughout the season. Um, you know, we gave up explosive plays, you know, even to Indiana who we played or Toledo last year, we gave up explosive plays, you know. So those were still wins, but it was always on my mind. And then it, uh, um, 
really came in after the season when I did the study. From here, Kyle Cameron, T. Robinson, the athletic. Jim, when you look at a guy like Davidson, obviously the most important, like obviously the thing that's important is you want to get your hands on the ball, you want to get an interception. But when you have a guy like Davidson who, even if he gives up a completion, is so physical that he rarely gives up a tackle on the outside, does that sometimes be, can that sometimes be a little bit low for outside corners? His ability to play the yeah you know, on the outside run yeah yeah I think uh, nowadays people think of corners just as cover guys and but they're you know teams build that in you know when you when you're playing with five DBs or different situations they build that in to try to get to the corner in the run game and in the scheme so I think it's a big bonus to have a guy like him who who will tackle. Go right here though. Second row middle, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Just more on the Jordan Hancock, Cameron Martinez. Just with, with, when you're deciding whether you're going to go with a corner or a safety there in those third and long situations, what is going through in, you and Perry's mind when you're trying to decide which one you want to go with in that situation? Well, you're balancing like uh, how much man you're going to play versus how much zone, you know, how much uh, disguise you want to have, um, you know, what – what has been their their zone training you know do they understand all the calls you know that the safeties would do they understand all the calls do they understand all the different formations you know man is man you'd certainly want the corner in there but you have to have other looks off of it so now it's it's okay does he understand those and does he understand where he fits in the zone all uh, right next one Doug Lane Maurice Rylas Jim again this what you're talking about was sort of adjusting your philosophy. Um, is that difficult? Was it obvious to you? Was it something that when you came to Ohio State, you thought maybe I will be less feast or famine because of the types of player? I'm just curious about, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. How much of a sea change is this for you? It's a change. Um, how much, I don't know. I mean, I try to pride myself in changing you know, over the years because the game changes, your personnel changes. Um, I can't, you know, if I'm honest, I can't say that was on my mind when I came here because, the, you know, the things that you do the previous stop are working, so you bring those with you. But I was of the mindset, of course, like, okay, I'd have to see, I have to see the personnel, I have to see how they react, I have to see how they handle you know all the different patterns and the, and the comprehensive nature of the system and then um you know yeah it's it's really just learning and trying to grow and trying to do what's best to win um it's not what i know it's what our players know and it's what they do best and that just philosophically and i know it probably changes game to game at a place like this with the players you have here do you take more risks and are more aggressive in an equal talent game against the best opposition, or do you back off on the aggressiveness in an equal talent game because we still trust our guys and we don't want to give up a big play because we're trying to be aggressive? I, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have to see the flow of the game. You have to, you know, it's always about balance, right? You, you, you never want to be predictable. You know, you want to be able to put the pressure in when it's least expected. Um, so to me, it's really about balance and un unpredictability you know you don't you don't want somebody to be able to just line you up and say they know what you're going to do so you're just trying to change up and when you get to those games you have to look at yourself scout and you have to say okay what have I done in this situation in the past and um, do I want to stick with it or is it time to throw a curveball got time for just a couple more we'll go deep left uh, Justin Holtrup after the game, Denzel said he had much of a, more of a pro approach to how he went about the offseason and is now seeing the results of that. How have you seen that, whether it's on film, you talk about habits being what a person is, how have you seen that come to fruition these past two weeks? Everything you see in the game, you see in practice, right? I mean, otherwise you're not doing a good job as a coach. Um, so... Yeah, I've seen it starting last spring from him, just his demeanor, his attitude, the way he takes care of his body, you know, um, you know, the, the brightness in his eyes, the locked in learning, you know, all those things. So I, I, we saw it all through spring camp and 
expect to see it in the game, and we have so far. How difficult is that for a player who had the up and down season he had last year to have that reflection and talk to himself a lot? He said that, and to go from that to where he is now and learn from those moments and not let it get too far down. Yeah, it's difficult, right? It's difficult for all of us to change. It's a, it's difficult for all of us to be uh, introspective and realize where maybe um, you can do better. So, and, and imagine it's even more difficult for a young person uh, under the spotlight of a top five program and, and you know, the pressure that he gets to be able to sit back and look at that. So I give him a lot of credit. Go over here, Matt Parker. Uh, yeah, Andy. Oh, I'm sorry. Andy. That, that too. Andy. It's Andy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hi, Andy. <laughs> so go back to Davidson. You talk about being aggressive or not aggressive. He's given up eight catches the first two weeks. Do you rather him keep those in front of him? Because he doesn't give up many yards after the catch. Do you okay with that, or do you want him to be more aggressive in some of those targets? More aggressive. Stay aggressive. Keep throwing punches. Don't change. Don't back off. Keep fighting. He's doing a good job. The Grow Middle, Patrick Murphy. Uh, Jim, Ryan's talked to us quite a bit about the clock rules and fewer possessions, things like that. How much has that been a conversation with the defensive side of the ball and maybe what you guys can do to get the ball back to the offense to kind of help alleviate some of those issues? Definitely after this game. You know, I thought our third down product, production was not good enough. So <clears throat> we have to, we have to, um, you know, it's one of those things you always emphasize the third down. And now you get to show your players how important it is and how you give up a couple third downs, but they don't score. Ultimately, that's a check. But we're at Ohio State. We, we need a check plus, you know. Check plus means get the damn ball back, you know, and, and we need to do a better job of that. We'll wrap it up right next to him with Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now. A uh, couple quick things. Does Austin Reed remind you of anybody that you've played against in the past? Played against a lot of good players. He looks like all the rest of them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Arbel Reese got a little banged up this weekend. Is he okay? He's okay. I don't know his status for this week, but he's, he's okay. Okay. And in general, for the first couple of games, I'm fairly happy with just general bumps and bruises and things. I mean, do you guys feel like you're fairly healthy outside of, of the injury for Josh? Yeah. I mean, I think in, in, in general, we're, we're doing okay health-wise. Sorry, we got one more down here, Tim. Nick. Yeah. Uh, Austin Reed, and what, did, what just jumps out at you about him? Uh, Jim, as you watch him play their quarterback, I mean, uh, obviously we had the nation in passing last year and stuff. What, what just jumps out at you? It's a, he, he 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 seems like a quarter I, I call it he you know he operates with impunity you know just like he just has a you know catch the ball slinging around mentality um, doesn't get hit a lot you know what I mean that's and that's that's where you really take notice is it just like an operator like a cool operator you know and he's just never seems under pressure doesn't make a lot of bad throws you know, just slings it with a purpose, like knows where he's going, doesn't get caught off guard too much. And, and the other thing, going in a game like this, I would think my my thought on this game is they're going to come in throwing haymakers and seeing if y'all can handle it. I mean, that's kind of a, you know, a rudimentary way of looking at it, but do you have that sense too? I mean, how, how do you keep your defense, I, I guess, how do you heighten the alert, you know, on the defensive side of the ball about what these guys have in mind? coaching you know that's coaching you have to show them what they're up against prepare them have a plan but yeah I think they'll do the same thing I think they ran uh, 90 plays against Auburn last year yeah. so you know um, I don't expect that they're going to try to slow the game down like we've seen the last two weeks thank you man thank you very much